So let me guess, you're brand new to Hunt Showdown, you like the idea of the game but you keep dying to AI, or you haven't even gotten your first kill yet. Well don't worry because this video will have everything you need to be able to compete with other players in Hunt Showdown. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you don't already know, my name is Birdies. I create content for Hunt Showdown here on YouTube, and I also stream over on Twitch. And in today's video, I'm hoping to have created the most complete Hunt Showdown beginner guide here on YouTube. We're going to cover everything a new player needs when starting out in the game, and if for some reason I left anything out, please comment your question and I'll be sure to get back to you. Alright, so this is how we're going to be doing it. Um, we're going to be going in this order of topics. I'm going to be sure to put timestamps for all the major topics, so if you need to come back and check anything out, that'll definitely be possible. So along with the timestamps down in the description, I'm also going to have links to other guides that I have on my channel, to the wiki, to a couple other pages you might need, and also I'm going to have some other Hunt Showdown creators down there. Um, they have great guides that I might not have on my channel, so that'll all be posted down in the description. Okay, and I know how big this game is in Germany, so don't worry for all my German friends. Meine Deutsche Scheiße, aber ich will haben ein Link list auf dem Description für Sie. I hope that was fucking good. Hey, I hope that made sense. That was three years of German in high school, so that might have been way off. Um, but with that said, this is a bit of a longer video, so let's get right into it. So we're gonna begin with the home page. Hey guys, over here now. We're gonna be going through all the tabs really quick and just gonna touch on all of them. This is like my third time doing it. The goal is to get all this under fucking eight minutes, but I keep rambling, so let's just get right into it. Up in the top left, we have the Prestige and Blood Rank. These are just your levels. Once you hit Blood Rank 100, you are able to Prestige and it goes up a number. These don't represent your skill or anything like that. I'm only at Prestige 6. Uh, the max Prestige is 100. I personally don't like the grind to have to re-get all my weapons and everything, because when you do Prestige, you lose all your weapons and you start all the way back at level 1, and so you have to go through the levels and get all your stuff back. So it's more of a preference thing. Here you have your Hunt Dollars and Blood Bonds. These are the in-game currency. Hunt dollars are what you use to buy your loadouts, your weapons, characters, all that stuff. Blood bonds are what you use to buy legendary skins, character skins, weapon skins. That's what that's for. So this is real money stuff. This is in-game, and you can get both by just playing the game. Over here, we just have your server, so obviously pick whatever is the best for you. And now for the tabs themselves. Starting with lobby, you have two game modes. You have bounty hunt, which is a standard 12-player game, and quick play. I have a whole video going into quick play and talking about how to win and just kind of the best methods and how it improves you as a player, and that will be in the description. But for now, until you watch that video, don't worry too much about it, definitely give it a try. Bounty hunts, the standard thing, that's what you're going to be playing most of the time. It's up to teams of three, if you click this bad boy on. One thing I should say is that if you play bounty hunt as a solo, you're still going to be going up against teams of two or three, depending if you have this on or not. And real quick, another thing on this page is this star rating or the MMR ranges. So right now, myself, I am considered a five-star player. Um, six is the top, I guess. So hopefully I'll get there one day. You're most likely in that one to two to three range, which is totally fine. Honestly, I wouldn't worry at all about this. Not at all. Because honestly, it's a really hard game as it is. So don't make, don't add pressure from the MMR ranges, you know. Um, moving down on the sub tabs, we got trials and training. I recommend doing the trials. It helps you learn how the AI interact. It gives you a little bit more knowledge of the map. There's also a free roam where you can just run around the whole map and learn. That's what I did for the new one to sell. And honestly, it's a really good little tactic. And also by doing the trials, you get these stars and those stars will give you, let me find it, these trial rewards. So there's 96 right now. They're still gonna add the DeSalle ones, hopefully a couple weeks until that's here. But yeah, this gives you like right here, vitality shots, 50 blood bonds. It gives you money, skins, weapons. It's a really cool little thing to do and it helps you learn the game. Now on to training, um, I'm covering it up, but it gives you blood bonds by completing these. It's 850 in total. The training itself isn't the best made, but it's definitely worth doing as a new player. You learn kind of the game loop, you learn about clues, how to find them with your dark sight, and just how to kill a boss. It gives you the whole thing. So everything except for PvP you can learn here. And then of course everything else will come with experience. So trials and training, I recommend doing highly. Over here are contracts. This hasn't been changed in years. Hopefully one day it will be. Uh, when the game first started, this was how you would pick your mission. 
So let's say, for example, right here would be the assassin on our night map, and you would click into that knowing what you're getting into. Right now, it's just all random. For progress, this just shows your level and nothing too important here, but you can see when you unlock stuff. So let's say you're like level five and you're like, when do I get the packs? And it's like, oh, rank 10. So this is where you can look for that. One thing that is worth noting is these little tiers right here. So at rank one, 34 and 67, that is when you get new tiered hunters. Um, we'll talk about that here in a second, but just remember those numbers. And this is also where you can prestige. Leaderboards, you don't need to worry about. The stats are kind of inflated anyway, so don't give too much into that. If you're big into lore, this is where you can find all that stuff. And also by completing these, you can get blood bonds. Not very much, but it adds up. So just like here, I haven't claimed this yet, but now I have five blood bonds from killing five armors, uh, 35 armors or something like that. So that's a cool little thing. You got your legal notes. You probably should read that about five times and the credits, same thing. So yeah, that should cover everything in the tabs. Other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Almost all the tabs. I just remembered. I'll pull it up on screen right now. I just remembered there is a event tab. This only comes around when there is an event. The one I'm showing you here was for the last event for Scrap Beak. These are really cool little things. For this one, we had to work as a community to unlock the second tier. And then once you get the second tier, you get the personal unlocks, which you can get skins, blood bonds, money, all the stuff I'm showing here. So those are cool. That'll come around only when there's an event. But it's important to mention that because depending on when you watch this video, there might be an event out. So there is that for you. And now we're going to take a look at the settings. Here on the game tab, first thing is field of view. I recommend keeping this at about 100. If you move it down too low, you're very narrow in sight. And if it is up too high, you get kind of a warp effect. I'll have some pictures up on the screen so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Next, we have the control scheme, which is hunter or gunslinger. These just kind of change your play style just slightly. I have a whole video about that that you should really check out and decide for yourself what you want to use. But yeah, I recommend Hunter. It gives you a little bit more control in my opinion. As far as these, sensitivities are all up to you, personalized. I would turn all the hints off. Well, maybe use the hints for a little bit until you kind of get the ball rolling and then turn these off because they get a little distracting. Next for the HUD, nothing too important here. These are my settings until we go down here. Or well, I would click all these except for the auto hide display on ammo. It's really nice when you're running or any situation really, when you can just look down and see your ammo. You don't have to, it doesn't auto hide, you know? Another thing is the exclude doors and windows. I would turn that on personally. I'll have a little video on screen right now kind of showing what the difference is. But that glow effect on the doors and windows gets a little old at times and it's harder to see through. Audio, nothing here. Graphics, now obviously run whatever you are capable of. I do recommend putting lighting and shadow low. It kind of helps. I mean, don't get me wrong, the lighting in this game is really nice. And I do like putting it high when I'm getting those cinematic captures, but for just casual gameplay, you don't really need them, you know? Performance stats, I put mine on basic and I turn off all the VC, motion blur, all that stuff. Advanced settings, I haven't touched any of these really. I'm not 100% sure what they do, so. Probably not the best guy to talk to about this, but I will look it up for you if you have a question. Now on to key customization. There are two keys that you need to know. Interact, bandage, stop burning. I recommend that you put those all on one key that you can click pretty quickly. Now the second one is dark sight. Mine's on E, it's a very easy key for me to hit. There's nothing really to compare Dark Sight to as far as other games, it's really unique to hunt. But Dark Sight basically allows you to find the clues, or if you have the bounty, it allows you to get that little wall tracker so you can see people through walls on that orange mist. Other than that, I mean obviously set your ping marker, I guess three buttons, have a ping marker ready. But yeah, just be familiar, make sure yours are all customized to what you want, and that should be it for settings. So now that you have your settings and an understanding of the menu system, let's start to get ready to make a loadout. But before that, let's talk about how items are unlocked. There are about three ways to unlock items. The first and most simple way is just by leveling up. On the Bloodline tab, you're able to see when you can use each item, but you probably noticed that not every item in the game is on this list. That's when the other two methods come into play. Items are first unlocked by level, and then the game requires you to use that item a certain amount of times before you can get the next unlock in the tree, or you're going to need a certain amount of XP with that item. Besides buying DLC and skins, the store tab is a really useful tool to see your progress towards these new items. You can use the store like I do here to see your progress towards all the weapon variants, tools, and consumables. 
For example, weapons and custom ammo are unlocked by earning a certain amount of XP. If I wanted to use this Mosin Sniper, I can see here in the store that I would first need to gather some more XP. To do this, I would need to kill either AI or players using a previous weapon variant in the unlock tree. In this case, any of these Mosin variants would work. This way of unlocking applies to all weapon variants in the game. The next method applies for most tools and consumables. Let's use the Vitality Shot as an example. You first start with the weak Vitality Shot, which heals you for 75 HP. To unlock the big Vitality Shot that will heal you fully, you will need to use the weak Vitality Shot 10 times in order to unlock it. If you need any help with unlocks, in the description I have a link to the Hunt Showdown wiki that explains how to unlock each item. Part 4 of this guide will help you understand how ammo works in Hunt Showdown. Let's begin by talking about base ammo. There are five types of base ammo in the game. You have compact ammo, medium ammo, long ammo, shotgun shells, and special ammo. Now special ammo is completely different from custom ammo. Things that are considered special ammo are bolts for crossbows, the dolch ammo, bomb lance, and the nitro express. The devs put these weapons into their own category for balancing reasons because these weapons are very powerful for what they do. Along with custom ammo, special ammo weapons need to find purple ammo crates in order to get ammo back in-game. Shotgun shells are just your basic buckshot. You do need to be relatively close to your enemy, and you should aim for the chest area for these to work. Long, medium, and compact ammo have unique features that differ from each category. These weapons are separated by caliber, and for that have special uses. For example, when it comes to wall penetration, the long ammo has the best pin, and from there it decreases in each category. This is also true for the overall damage, muzzle velocity, and range of each of the weapons in their own categories. As far as the other stats you can see listed, they really apply more to the weapon in question than to the overall category. But on average, the compact ammo weapons will have the fastest rate of fire. Weapons in Hunt are really well balanced, so it's really more about how you use your weapon than which weapon you have equipped. A compact ammo Winfield can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the long ammo Mosin if the situation is played correctly. Let's now take a look at the custom ammo in Hunt Showdown. Since their release this year, the devs have made a bunch of changes to just about every ammo. In this video, we're not going to really talk about what the best ammos are, but instead let's just focus on what they do. Starting with shotguns, we have 5 custom ammos to cover. Flechette rounds cause enemies to bleed when they're hit. This ammo is really good at applying pressure. Star shells are literally just flares that can light up an area. They can also blow up barrels if shot directly. Slugs shoot a single projectile that turn your shotgun into a short range rifle. Penny Shot will deal increased damage at close range, but less reliable than Buckshot over normal distances. And Dragon's Breath will shoot a cone of fire that will set anything in the way ablaze. But this ammo does take away the ability to one-shot kill. The goal of custom ammo is to add an alternative way to use a weapon without breaking the core gameplay, so it's important to know that you don't have to run custom ammo every single game. Now let's take a look at the rifles. We have 7 ammos to cover on this list. First we have high velocity bullets, these are only available for compact weapons, and this ammo greatly increases your muzzle velocity for those weapons. FMJ ammo will increase your wall penetration, but come with slightly less muzzle velocity. Spitzer ammo is only available for long ammo rifles, and make for great sniping rounds. They increase your muzzle velocity and penetration, but increase your recoil in return. Poison ammo will put an enemy into a poison status effect, but is mostly used for the PvE aspect, as it one-shots most AI. Dum Dum ammo will cause enemies to bleed just like the flechette ammo, but also lose the ability to penetrate walls. Incendiary ammo will set enemies ablaze, but require at least two shots. They can also blow up barrels instantly. And lastly, Explosive Ammo will do an AoE splash damage on impact, but recently the devs have been kinda nerfing this ammo, so look out for that. Finally, for custom ammos, we have the crossbows. For the large crossbow, we first have Shot Bolts. This is a buckshot attached to an arrow. This is probably one of my favorite ammos in the game. The second ammo for large crossbows are gonna be Explosive Arrows. This ammo does an AoE splash damage on impact. For the hand crossbow, we have three to look at. First is the Poison Bolt. This ammo will leave a cloud of poison on impact. The last two bolts are more for utility and replicate two different throwables, which are the Choke Bolts and the Chaos Bolts. While we're talking about the ammos and damage, here's the hitbox outline for Hunt. Headshots will kill enemies in almost every situation, but depending on if you penetrated a wall or on the distance, sometimes it won't be a one-shot kill. The next best place to aim is for the upper chest or for the stomach, because these will also do a considerable amount of damage. While leg and arm shots are the worst places to land because they both received reduced damage. With unlocks and ammo covered, let's get into some tips on making a loadout. Okay guys, part 5 is going to be the loadout. So, from here, we're going to be taking a look at the roster and recruitment page a little deeper. Let's go ahead from this page, recruit a hunter. So like we talked about earlier, you have your tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 hunters. 
that are unlocked at rank 1, rank 34, and rank 67. As you go up the tiers, the characters will be equipped with better weapons and traits, more traits. So if you look here, the free hunter is always going to be a tier 1, and you can get a free one after every game, you'll get a free reshuffle. So in this case, this guy actually came with a really decent loadout. Um, most of the time on the free hunters, they'll be equipped with some pretty crappy stuff. Moving up to the tier 2s, you do get a couple traits with them, and usually better weapons. As you move up, the characters also change how they look. Um, as you notice, this tier 1 is just kind of a what we call a white shirt. You go up from tier 2 to tier 3, and the characters just look way cooler. Um, also, this guy, for 1,343 hunt dollars, will have three traits. A bomb lance, which is kind of a preference weapon. I don't really use it, but it is a good weapon. And a dulch which you'll hear a lot about the Dolch as you play this game. So in this example, we're gonna go ahead and just grab the Free Hunter. So now we're actually gonna edit his loadout and this is something you can follow along with. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off just for now. Of course, you can use whatever pistol you'd like, but in this situation, we're gonna get something that'll pair really well with the Vetterly. So we're actually gonna go for the Pax. The Pax is a nice medium ammo weapon and so is the Vetterly. And when you pair them together, they actually share ammo, so you're able to have a larger ammo pool for each weapon. Moving down, we are going to grab a knife. Now, it doesn't really matter if you grab, you know, a heavy knife or a regular knife, but this is something that you need to be taking every single game. Having a knife just makes it so much easier to get through the map and allows you to move quickly without using your bullets to kill the AI. So that is definitely something you must have on every loadout. We're also going to grab a first aid kit. That is another thing you need on every single loadout and obviously it just heals you, not much to really talk about there. Another thing I recommend taking are choke bombs. Choke bombs allow you to put out fire, so it's very common for when an enemy team downs one of your teammates, they'll throw fire on them because that takes away their health as they're laying there dying, right? So choke bombs allow you to just put out the fire from a distance instead of having to run up and put it out yourself. And from here, you could grab fuses if you would like. It allows you to kill armored grunts and hives a lot easier. Not something you need to take, but it's an option. We're gonna move down to consumables, and here we're actually gonna grab two weak vitality shots. Having extra heals is always nice, and the vitality shots heal you quicker than a medkit itself, and for more, so it's always nice to have that backup option. And I do recommend taking at least one explosive on every loadout. This allows you to clear out rooms or, you know, really just gives you some options to play with. So from here, this is actually a really solid loadout that you can run with. And I do recommend the Vetterly highly for new players. It's got great sights. I actually have a whole video talking about it. It's one of my favorite weapons, to be honest with you. I also have a couple other loadouts. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This is going to be a Springfield paired with a Pax and one slot of explosive ammo. Same tools and consumables. But explosive ammo allows you to shoot out doors and windows really well. They've kind of been nerfing it on the damage side, so it's not really as useful when you're fighting people, but it's a nice utility to have. And one thing you'll notice on the single shot rifles is that they're able to actually take two different ammo types. So if you throw back to the Vetterly, the Vetterly has an internal magazine, so it is not able to take more than one bullet type. But you go up to the Springfield here, that's the same thing for the Sparks or the Martini. These types of weapons are able to take two different types of ammo, so that's important to know. If you're looking for a shotgun loadout, I recommend the Romero 77, and you want to pair it with a nice mid-range pistol, so something like the Pax or the Uppercut is very good for this. And one thing about these guns is that you do want to be kind of close within that 15 meter range, 10 meters on some of the shotguns. That's when you're going to get those one-shot kills, and that's what really matters with the shotguns. Another loadout that you can look at is going to be the Nagant Officer Carbine, and you're going to want to pair this with a pistol such as the Nagant Officer itself. You can also throw high velocity bullets on both of these. This is a nice little repeater that you can use. Double action revolver, my bad, not a repeater. But again, this is another solid loadout. And another thing you'll notice is that I kind of take similar tools and consumables on almost all my loadouts. I do vary it. Sometimes I'll add something like an antidote shot, which will negate poison status effects. I will also take things like concertina traps if I'm feeling like that. I would actually throw choke bombs in there too. I would take those almost every single game. Now, if you're playing solo, you don't need choke bombs, obviously, so you can use another slot there. But this is kind of the setup that I recommend. A couple things that I want to mention under the recruitment tab is legendary hunters. I know we talked about them a little bit earlier, but to buy these, you have to use blood bonds or real money, depending on if it's a DLC or not. But once you buy it, you are able to unlock it. And from there, it takes 333 hunt dollars to buy the character. And now let's say this guy dies, I still have the skin available, I just have to go back and spend another 333 to get him back. And these character skins will come with three traits. 
Uh, they're all randomized, so you don't get to pick them, sadly. But before we talk about traits, I do want to talk about the health bar really quick. So you notice there's all kinds of setups. Like here, you got small bar, small bar, two big bars. And all that means is big bars are going to be 50 HP, small bars are going to be 25 HP, and every character has 150 health. You can't go above 150 health, even on the three big bars, that's 50 each, so 150. The setups don't matter too much. I don't like characters that have three big bars, personally, because when you die, you do lose the rightmost health bar. So in this case, if this guy died and got revived, he would be missing 25 HP permanently until he banished one of the bosses. That's the only way to get it back. Now looking at traits, it's important to know that each character has a maximum amount so they can fill up this entire bottom row and you can't go above that. Traits themselves are just perks that kind of change different aspects about your character. Some are a little more useful than others but they all have their own place in the game. I'm gonna have a little list pop up right now of traits that I recommend. Things like Physician, Greyhound, Lightfoot. These all are pretty standard and kind of first picks. And other than that, you kind of want to play around with them yourself and figure out what fits for your playstyle. But I will have a nice uh, video down in the description. It's a tier list by 4FS. I really like how he explains it in the video. He says that there's no real bad traits, there's just some that are better for most situations and more niche picks. So I do recommend that video if you're looking for a trait tier list. And I think that just about covers the loadout section. Um, here are the loadouts I recommend again. So we got Springfield Packs, Romero Packs, or Uppercut. We got the Nagant M1895 Officer Carbine with a Nagant Officer as a sidearm. And the Vetterly. Those are some nice very early picks that you can grab and decent weapons as a whole. So let's get into that next part. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now ready to get into a match. As we wait for this queue timer, I just wanted to remind you that hitting that like button is free so I'll wait. But in all seriousness, this is my first time making a massive guide like this, and any support you can show really goes a long way. Whether it's just by hitting the like button or subscribing to stay updated with all my Hunt Showdown content, it really helps me out, so thank you guys. For part six, we're gonna cover the goals of the game. Here's a little list of what we're gonna be talking about. So let's start with the basics. Hunt Showdown is pretty simple when it's all boiled down. You load into a match with a total lobby size of up to 12 players. From here, you are on the hunt for the bounty. To find the bounty, you must first find three clues using Dark Sight. These clues will black out parts of the map to help you narrow down the location of the boss. A quick tip, if you see a clue that is opened like this, that means an enemy team has already used this clue. If you see a clue that is red and making sounds like this, that means enemies are extremely close to you and the clue, so get ready to fight. If you manage to kill the boss and receive the bounty tokens, you now have to make your way to one of the three extracts that randomly load in at the start of the match. The only way for you to win the match is to extract with the tokens. It doesn't matter if you stole them off a body or earned them yourself. A win is a win. While you're doing all this, you have to navigate the map and get through zombies and other players. So let's take a look at all of the zombies in Hunt. The first and most abundant are Grunts. Grunts are the staple zombie and can easily be killed with a hit from a melee tool such as a knife. Grunts can spawn in with weapons that will put you into one of the three status effects. The first of which is the bleed effect. Grunts that spawn in with cleavers will make you bleed when they hit you. Grunts that spawn in with torches will in turn make you burn when they strike you. Or if you attack one of the new minor zombies, they will cause a small explosion if you hit them on the lantern. I learned this the hard way. Dr. Grunts will put you into a poison effect, which will negate your ability to heal. The cool thing about these grunts is that they also drop a medkit. For the next type of zombies, we have the armored. There are two types of armored zombies. The standard armors will soak up a large amount of bullets if you shoot at them, and will die to a couple hits from a knife. The concertina armor work the same way except they will cause you to bleed, not only when they hit you, but also when you hit them. Lanterns found on the map or fuses are an easy way to kill these zombies. The hives will send a swarm of killer bees towards you that will put you under the poison status effect. Sometimes these zombies will spawn on top of buildings, so you might have to shoot them to stop the bees. Hellhounds will travel in packs, and when they attack, they will cause a bleed effect. The best way to fight them is to be aggressive. So if you turn the tables and run at the dogs before they have a chance to lunge at you, you're gonna have a much better time. Water devils will sit at choke points in any stream or river and will cause bleed damage. You can shoot them to kill them, but I actually recommend going around them and finding a different crossing point. Immolators are probably the most annoying zombie in the game. They run super quick, and if shot or pierced by a knife, they will explode. The best way to kill these zombies is by hitting them with the butt of your gun, or you can even use choke bombs if you're having a lot of trouble. And lastly, we have meatheads. They have about half the health of a boss and will use their parasites to track you down. Usually just avoid these zombies as they take a while to kill without using dynamite. If you do manage to kill a meathead, you might just be treated with a random trait though. 
There are a few things in Haunt that you're able to loot. Just like the trait charms that you can find on the map or from killing meatheads, you can also find cash registers and little bags of money. Hunt also has envelopes that'll either give you Hunter XP, Bloodline XP, or more trait points. The last lootable you should look out for is the blueprints. When found, they unlock the next variant in the unlock tree just by picking up the blueprint. Super useful. When it comes to PvP, in my opinion, Hunt has some of the best fights I've ever played. In the description, I will have a link to my beginner PvP guide that you should really check out. The best advice I can give you is to play with patience. This isn't Call of Duty where you can 360 no scope enemies. The fights in Hunt are usually a little bit on the longer side and take great positioning and patience to win. Now of course this doesn't mean that you should always play extremely slow. A good rule to live by in Hunt is to play as fast as you possibly can without making a sound. Hunt Showdown is all about noise and gunshots can be heard across the map. Every time you shoot your weapon you need to remember that everybody in the game just heard you and now knows your general location. This is why taking knives is so important it allows you to move through the map quicker without shooting zombies. Sounds are such a big part of the game that you should always be aware of all the sound traps. Every compound will either have dogs or chickens inside of kennels. When you approach the kennels, you will set off this trap. You can either shoot the lantern in the middle to stop the animals from making noise, or you can use some kind of throwable to hit the same lantern. The game also has horses that are super annoying, just shoot them in the head. Just kidding, you can actually melee them, that's probably the smarter idea. And Hunt also has birds that'll fly away from you. One tip about the birds is that they will always fly in the direction that you're running towards the map. So let's say you manage to do everything right so far and you end up at the boss compound. One thing you always need to do is use your dark sight to scout out the compound. The boss symbol will ping white when no one is around and red whenever enemies are also at the compound. Compounds will always have one or two areas that the bosses can spawn in. The boss can never go outside of this designated area and it's usually a good idea to have at least one person defend from inside the boss building. When defending or attacking compounds, you always want to play safe angles. You never want to be overly aggressive unless you have a clear advantage. When defending a compound, it's usually best to play on the slower side since you do have the upper hand in most situations. The bounty gives your dart sight the ability to see the location of enemies. And when you're attacking, you do usually have to make the first move. This is when grenades become very handy. Flushing out the defenders with dynamite is one of the best techniques to winning the fight. Experience is the best teacher and you'll learn how to play out each individual fight over time. I hope this broad information does help to put you in the right direction though. To wrap up this video, let's talk about each of the four bosses. This is going to be a broad overview of each boss to help you know what you're up against. Each boss have their own key features and abilities, so let's take a look at those. Starting with the Butcher. He is the most simple boss to fight and hunt in my opinion. The Butcher causes fire damage, but is also immune to any type of fire thrown at him. Each boss has their own frenzy mode, and this mode is basically when they become enraged and have different sorts of abilities. When the Butcher enters frenzy, he will move quicker and begin swinging his weapon sporadically. He will also throw fireballs at you in this mode. The best way to kill the Butcher is to use an axe found around the compound. For any of the bosses, it's best if you and your partner take turns whacking at him. Next, we have the Spider, which is probably my least favorite boss. This nasty beast will inflict poison damage, but is also immune to poison itself. When in frenzy mode, the Spider will chase you down and even jump on you. The Spider can climb on the walls, making it hard to hit at times, but the best way to kill it is with an axe or a sledgehammer. The Assassin is a really cool boss to look at and fight. He causes bleed damage and is very weak to fire damage. When he's in his bug form, it's pretty hard to hit him, so kind of wait until he's standing upright. When he enters Frenzy, he will stand still and begin to summon his clones. While he stands there, you can get free hits, but he does take reduced damage. The Axe is my favorite weapon to use against the Assassin. And finally, we have good old Scrappy. Scrappy behaves a lot differently than the other bosses. This boss will hoard everything the compound has to offer. Compounds that Scrap Beak is at will be bare of all ammo, health kits, and melee weapons. You gotta beat the first 25% of Scrap Beak with your knife or gun. Once he passes that threshold, he will drop some of his loot. This will happen again for the next two 25% markers. If you burn Scrap Beak, the pile of loot he drops will also be burnt, making it unusable. When he enters frenzy mode, he will swing whatever weapon he has and will also shoot out barbed wire. As a new player, Scrap Beak might be one of the most challenging bosses to kill. All the bosses will take time to learn, but I really like how they have their own feel to the game. You can always shoot the bosses if you would like, but again, that lets other players know where you're at. I would only shoot the boss to speed up the process if enemies are nearby, or if you need to get some health bars back. Okay, so I really do hope this guide was helpful. I put a lot of time into this video, and it's been my biggest project yet. 
Hunt Showdown is one of my favorite games and I'm always happy to see new people join the game and give it a try. If you still have any questions about the game, please leave them in the comments and I really will get back to you and help you out. And also really do check out the description. There's going to be a ton of guides in there, not only the ones by me, but other creators in the game. Checking that list out will give you a boost when starting out in the game. You can also head over to my Twitch anytime I'm live. You can always ask me questions. I'm always willing to help you guys out. But yeah, I want to thank you guys all for watching and thank you for the support. Whether you hit the like button or sub to the channel, it goes a long way for me and I really do appreciate it appreciate it. So until next time guys, I'll see you later.